This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hi hey guys, well today we're going to do a slightly more advanced tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to create custom tileable textures in Photoshop so that we can use them in Keyshot using the graph editor, which is node based. Okay, so let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, well we're in Photoshop and in my case I'm in Photoshop CC 2017 and uh, we're going to start off by creating a new file in Photoshop. Now I'm going to create a file that is exactly square, so it's a thousand by a thousand pixels and that's very important. The reason why it's important is because we want this to be a tileable texture and as we repeat it in a, a horizontal and vertical direction, we want to make sure that it will look symmetrical by keeping this square, okay? So a thousand by a thousand we're going to create, which will create this white uh, cube here. And now we need to start to create a pattern. Now, whatever you do here, make sure that it's set up correctly, but you can set up a logo, a circle, a square, any odd shape you like uh, for the texture that you want. You can even bring in external textures, but for now we're gonna keep it basic. So I'm gonna to go to this shape right here. I'm gonna take a polygon shape. I'm gonna hold down my left uh, mouse and the shift key as I drag, so I don't distort it until we get something like this, okay? I'm gonna position it in the middle and you can see by these uh, pink lines that it's positioned correctly. And I want this to be level, so I'm gonna hit Control T. So it will allow me to rotate that until the bottom is straight and I think it is right now, okay? So I'm gonna hit Enter. Like I said, it's square, which is good. But I also want to make this tileable, so what I need to do is I need to create an offset, okay? So I'm gonna right click on this layer and I'm gonna go to duplicate layer and hit okay. And while I'm on that duplicate layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to, uh, let's see, filter other offset, convert the smart object. We need to do that, otherwise we can't proceed and as we do that, it's going to set up the situation. And what we want is we want a horizontal and a vertical value of 500. Because we created our cube thousand by thousand, we're basically splitting it in half. Okay. So when I hit OK, we got half here, half here, top and bottom. So as we start to tile this, we will have a symmetrical pattern with this guy in the middle. Okay. So I'm happy with this as a texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift select these other layers, right click and go to merge layers. And then I'm gonna to go to file and save as. And I did some testing, so I'm just gonna overwrite these here. So I'm gonna save this as a PNG file. I'm gonna call it texture. So save that and in my case, overwrite it and hit okay, that's fine. That's our texture part. And then the second part is we want to have a bump map for uh, this uh, texture as well, okay? So we're gonna create a bump map based on this guy, and the way we're gonna do that is by applying a Gaussian blur, all right? So with this selected, I'm gonna go to Filter. We're gonna go to uh, Blur, to Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna set the uh, blur to 10 pixels, as you can see here, and hit OK. And you can clearly see that it's quite blurry, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File and Save As. And again, you know, I already did this, so I'm going to select my bump. I'm going to overwrite it and hit OK and OK. So now these two files have been saved out on my desktop. And now it's time to jump into Keyshot. Here we go. OK, guys, well, we're in Keyshot. Keyshot 6.3.23 to be exact, and we're in the pro version, which is important because I believe that only the pro version has the material graph, but I'm not 100% sure, okay? So we're gonna go to File and New, just to make sure we're on a clean page here. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna bring in our model. And in this case, I went into Maya, I created a basic cube, nothing else, just clicked on Polygon Cube, and I exported that as an OBJ, okay? So I'm gonna to go to File and Import, and there we go. I'm gonna select the cube that I created and hit Open and Import, okay? So like I said, nothing fancy, just a cube. 
Now, what we need to do next is we need to apply uh, a basic texture to our cube. So we can use that to create our custom tileable texture. So uh, you can use all sorts of materials as long as you make sure that they have enough nodes that can be populated with the files that you have created. Now, if that sounds confusing, just uh, look and you'll see what I mean, right? So I'm gonna go to my material tab and I chose a hard plastic that is shiny. And I'm gonna select this black here and I'm gonna left click and drag it in and drop it onto my cube. Now, as I do that, you can see that it's black. It's not really shiny. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a, uh, some lighting through a HDRI file. So I'm gonna jump to environment, take this conference room uh, HDRI map and drag that in and release it. And then I'm gonna go into my environment, select a background and drag that in. Okay, maybe a bit brighter than that. All right. So basically what we got right now is a very shiny black cube on a white background, fine. Okay, so now it's time to build our custom tileable texture, right? So we got this material, I'm gonna double click on it. And as we do that, it opens up the material tab. And here you have the button for the material graph, okay? So let's say uh, click on that and open it up. And as we do that, you can see that this is the basic node for this type of plastic with a diffuse slot, a specular slot, bump, and opacity. And here you have a plus where you can add additional ones if you want. And that's gonna be the basis for our custom texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my desktop and select that texture file that we created in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna drag that in and drop that on to, uh, into my material graph so I can use it as a node. All right, now this is my texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little circle here and I'm gonna drag that towards my diffuse slot here and release. And once I do that, the texture has now been plugged in and you can see that I now have a repetitive pattern on my cube. And because of the way we set that up, you can see it's tileable and it works fine. Okay, cool. So with that said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can incorporate our bump. Now you can see right now that it's completely flat, although it's reflective, it's very, very flat. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna drag in our bump map and let's release that as well. Now obviously we want our bump to go into our bump. So we're gonna select this, drag it in and drop it onto our bump map. And as we do that, you can see, if you look closely, that we now have a bump value. Now, with this selected, I wanna make sure that I can tweak that somewhat. So I'm gonna to go to textures, and uh, let's find the right one here. Hang on, uh, give me one sec. Yeah, by simply clicking on the bump PNG right here, if we click on that, we can scroll down, and here you have the bump height, okay? So I can pull that up and hopefully you can see that here. I'll try to get this in a bit closer. By bumping that value up, you will clearly see what's going on. I typically want to keep that bump height somewhere around, let's say 1.10 or so. And you can choose to apply it as a normal map, but you will see that it will look completely off so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave it as such. So that's um, added on. And uh, now you already have a tileable custom pattern with a bump map. But let's say you don't want this to be in black and white. You want to have a different color. Now what we can do there is we can add a new node. So I'm just gonna go into this area. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to textures and down to color gradient. Okay, now I want this color gradient to be between my texture map and my plastic material node, okay? So I'll just open this up a little bit. And I want this texture map to be plugged into my color gradient and from my color gradient to my plastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click and drag from this guy to this guy. 
and then from this guy into my diffuse. And as I release this, you'll see that this line now disappears, and this is now the new connection, like so, all right? Now, when we do that, you see that we get kind of a ramp right now, and it has these colors, red and white. So let's have a look. I'll just drag this onto my other screen here for a sec. And you can manipulate those values by going into the texture tab in your material and simply by uh, changing these values. So I can uh, click on this red right here. And let's say we want that to be black. Or let's even, let's do white and then we'll reverse it. So that's white. Then we'll go to this guy. Double click on it, go to black, or any other color you want, as you can see. And that is how you can manipulate that, all right? Now, if we set this up towards a render, and I'll quickly go to full simulation, you'll see that looking at it very closely that the bump has been applied here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, if we set this up by going to flatten ground, we'll take in ground reflections, we'll go into lighting and turn off interior mode. You can see that it works quite well. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you because by now you probably get the general idea. If you go to this area and you right click and go, for example, to textures, you can see that you can bring in all sorts of values similar to what you see in the Hypershade node in Maya, for example. You can bring in a granite texture, leather, marble, um, cloth, and so forth. You can uh, bring in uh, different material types if you want, and they're all node-based, okay? So hopefully this will help you on your way to create your uh, custom tileable textures. And uh, that said, that's basically all there's to it. So have fun with that. Before I go, please uh, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, let me know. And I'd love to see you guys again. Okay, bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.